This is TTELT Teaching Tips for English Language Teachers. I'm Dr. Gina Rhodes. Let's get started. Before we get started on this week's topic, I would like to tell you about TTELT Talks. This is going to be our second ever TTELT Talk, and this month we're going to be um, doing the talk on Saturday, February 27th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to have the talks on the last Saturday of every month. So hopefully you'll be able to join us at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday, February 27th. And this month, we're gonna be talking about three different topics. And these were the topics that you told us that you wanted to talk more about in the first TTELT talk. So we're going to um, talk about transitioning back from online to face-to-face and also some of you talked about that so you're you're going back and forth sometimes you're online sometimes you're face to face with your students and so some we're going to be talking about how we can do that more smoothly okay you also said that you wanted to talk about teaching critical thinking skills so we'll be discussing that and we'll also be talking about motivating students so our plan is to have three different rooms and have people discussing these three topics in the three different rooms. And so we'll also have a lot of other discussion topics, but those are going to be our three main tactics this month. So we hope that you'll come and discuss those topics with us. And you can sign up for all of these events on our event page at ttlt.org. We hope to see you there. This week on TTLT, we're talking about quizzes. So we're going to focus on some quick and easy quizzes tips. So hopefully that you, you will enjoy these tips and have a better understanding of how to use quizzes. So what is quizzes? Quizzes is an educational game you can play with your students. Quizzes as an informal assessment to let you and your students know how much of the lesson they have understood. And it's a fun and engaging way um, for your students to learn. Quizzes uh, is uh, at quizzes.com and you can go there to create your own free account. So it's Q-U-I-Z-I-Z-Z dot C-O-M. So go there to open your own free account. Yes, they have paid accounts, but you know me, I like to use the free version. So we're gonna talk about all the things we can do are some of the things, the quick and easy things we can do with the free version of quizzes. Why do we use quizzes with our students? Well, I'm gonna tell you about why I use quizzes with my students. Uh, because I love that I can find out very quickly if they have understood what I have taught them. And I love that it's a good break from the textbook. So they, you know, if you just do exercise and activity in the textbook one after the other, the students get tired of it, you get tired of it. So this breaks it up and it's, it's something fun. And the students like using their phones. So if they're using their phone for something educational, it's better than them using it to, you know, scroll on Facebook or on Twitter during your class, right? So instead of doing that, they're doing what you would like them to be doing with their phone. And one of the things I love about quizzes is that it's similar to formal tests or quizzes. So um, a lot of the programs that I work with, they use Google Forms for their quizzes and tests So um, that are graded. So when I use quizzes, um, then the students are learning how it's going to look in their test. So they have a clearer idea of what to expect when they take a test because they've already had a few questions that were constructed the same way. So they know what the test is asking for. And so I found that the stu my students' grades went up when I started using quizzes because all of their tests are in Google Forms. So I said, this is the style of question that you're gonna have on your test. So because they realized that this is how they were going to be tested, um, they understood when they got the test, they understood exactly what was expected uh, and they were able to answer the questions more easily. And another great thing is that you don't need two screens like you do for Kahoot. One of the things that's nice about Kahoot is that it doesn't have the students just looking at their screen all the time. But when you're teaching online, um, it can be frustrating, especially when your students are taking the class on their phones. They're trying to 
um, see the question on one screen and also answer the question on another and it can be really tricky with Kahoot but with quizzes you don't have to worry about that because the question is there and so is the answer so they can see everything on one screen they don't have to keep moving back and forth that's a really nice thing okay and so when we talk about how to search for a quiz on quizzes um, it searches a lot like Kahoot. So if you're familiar with searching for quizzes on Kahoot, you're going to see that it's, um, this one works in a familiar way. You can search by theme, like Australia or animals. You can search by grammar point, such as present perfect or count or non-count nouns. And my favorite, you can search by textbook because I love that a teacher has already created a good quiz that is using my exact textbook that I'm using with my students. So if there's already a quiz that's cutting edge pre-intermediate unit three, I wanna use that quiz. And I may not use all of the questions, but I'm glad that that teacher has already done a lot of the work for me. I love that. Thank you teachers who do that for me. <laughs> and so like I said, sometimes I don't wanna use all of the questions that that teacher has used, or I wanna make some changes. So um, first I decide which of the quizzes I want to edit. And then you'll go to copy and edit. And this is gonna be at the top of the page. Once you've clicked on the quiz that you want to use, you go to copy and edit on the top right. And then you can, you'll see after you click that, you'll see at the top, it'll say new question. So you can add a question or you can edit a question. If you wanna make you know more than one question correct or if you see a mistake that a teacher has made or you wanna do something different, you can click edit um, next to each question. You can edit each question individually. You can even change the timings, okay? And um, yeah, so you can click edit next to the question. And the other thing, as I mentioned, this is a lot like Google Forms. And if you've used Google Forms, you know that it's not just multiple choice. There's also true, false, there's um, poll, there are, um, checklist. So there's a lot of different ways that you can answer questions. You can even write in answers on Google Forms and you can do the same thing on quizzes. So you can have the students practice whatever it is you want them to practice. They can do that on quizzes more easily than they could on other platforms such as Kahoot. So there's, there's more flexibility with quizzes, which is nice. And so, and then of course, when you're done, when you're finished, you gotta make sure you click done at the top right in order to save the changes. Don't forget that bit. Okay, so now that we've got our quizzes, our quiz, our quizzes quiz, exactly the way we want, we need to learn how to play the games, right? So once you've chosen a quizzes, then click start a live quiz, and you need to decide if you want to play classic or instructor pace. The main difference between classic and instructor pace is classic um, while the students are playing they're they're kind of playing at their own pace um, which again is different from Kahoot because you stop after each question but with um, their classic version you are most of the often just seeing a leaderboard to see who's got the highest score at that moment but you can't see how they're doing on individual questions there is a way that you can switch and see how many questions have been answered and how many of those are right but it's really difficult to see who is doing that um, but if you do instructor paste then you can um, you can see exactly who is struggling to answer the questions and taking longer and it might not be that they're struggling it could just be their internet but because often I have problems with internet that's another reason that I sometimes use instructor paste because then I can if I'm doing instructor pace and I see that the, t the clock is running out and there's still a lot of my students who haven't answered the question, I can turn off the timer if I'm doing instructor pace and I can, um, then I can see um, how many students got each question right and wrong. And so if I see that a lot of students got that question wrong, we can stop and I can reteach that point. Or we can talk about um, in what way the, the question, why the question was right, why the question was wrong. So. It's another great um, part about it. And then once you have chosen, if you're gonna do classic or instructor paste, then you click on that one, either classic or instructor paste, and your students will go to joinmyquiz.com and then they're gonna type in the code. So 
and um, yeah, so it's just joinmyquiz.com and type in the code. And then of course they have to type in their name before we can start. And the other way that you can play is that you can assign homework. So this is to, this is a challenge. So they call them, um, anytime you're playing asynchronous, asynchronously in a, in, um, quizzes, it's called assign homework. So I call it a challenge. They call it assign homework. But so if you're doing challenges with your students, you click on that assign homework link and then you decide when you want the challenge to end. You can decide the date, then the time, and then you send the link to the students and that you can um, share the link for them, just copy and paste the link, or you can have them um, type in, go to joinmyquiz.com again, and they can um, type in the code as they they would if they were playing live. So either one works. So those are the two ways to um, to send the link to your students or to give the students the access to that challenge. Okay, so now that we have learned some quick and easy ways to, um, to use quizzes, we're gonna talk about our top teaching tips this week. Uh, the first thing is that it is easy to search for and edit previously created quizzes. And again, thank you teachers who have previously created the quizzes I use. And creating your own quizzes isn't as time consuming as you might have thought. So you can create from scratch um, as well, but it's not, it's not that difficult because it uses a lot of the same technology. Uh, okay. Um, quizzes are an engaging and effective alternative to Kahoot. So if you're struggling with the, um, the internet to use Kahoot, or if your students don't have access, they, they're, they're doing everything on their phone, or if they're just, they've done so many cahoots because you love cahoots and they love cahoots, but they're starting to get bored with them. You can use quizzes instead. So it's a, a another way to engage your students. If they've, if they have, if they are cahooted out. And of course, one of the major teaching tips I can tell you is that if you would like to learn more about quizzes, um, there's a lot more to learn that we haven't talked about in this episode. So if you'd like to learn more about how to use quizzes, then come to the TTLT workshop. And we would love for you to try quizzes in your classroom and let us know how it went. So please um, try it in your classroom and um, go to ttlt.org send us a message and let us know how it went, or you can always put it in the comments. And now you get to play your own quizzes. So I have a challenge for you and I've put the challenge link in the notes and I would like you to try and get the high score and put your score in the comments so that we can see how well you did. And as I mentioned earlier, we are doing the quizzes um, workshop this month. So quizzes in the classroom is going to be twice. We're going to do the first one on Thursday, February 18th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the second one is Friday, February 19th at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can sign up for these workshops and all TTLT workshops and events on our events page at ttlt.org. And, um, we're going, to, we're going to have another amazing workshop that's led by Kira. I hope that you've already seen her episode um, on using Notion. So she's going to do a whole workshop on using Notion in the classroom. And in that workshop, you're going to learn a lot more about how, how to set up your own Notion and use it with your students. And that's going to be Monday, February 8th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time which is 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for her in San Francisco. And I hope that you have also watched Eileen's episode on using music. So if you haven't, I highly recommend watching this one. It's great, but her workshop is going to be amazing. And her workshop on using music in the classroom is Friday, February 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, and that's the same time as Eileen because she's in Florida, Eastern Standard Time, easy, right? So. Um, make sure though that you're checking your local time so that you are sure when Eastern Standard Time is in your world. And of course, I want to mention once again that our next TTLT talk is going to be on Saturday, February 27th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
and、um, please go remember to sign up for this and all TTLT events on our event page at ttlt.org. And the best news that I have to share with you this week is that we are officially a 501c3 nonprofit. So, all donations that you make to TTLT are tax deductible. So, you can donate on our Facebook page, which is the Rhodes Education Foundation, or you can donate on ttlt.org. So, the Rhodes Education Foundation is our parent company or Umbrella organization, however, you want to describe it, but that is the name of the nonprofit, and TTLT is part of that nonprofit. So, anytime that you give to the Rhodes Education Foundation, you are helping us keep TTLT going. So, please donate or ask a sponsor to, don to donate to TTLT. And there are lots of places you can donate. We have a Patreon account, a GoFundMe account, and a PayPal account. And you can go to each of these accounts or You can click on, our, on donate at the ttlt.org website. So, if you click on donate, you can choose which of those, those accounts you would like to donate, or you can encourage a sponsor to go to those pages and, and donate. So, we really hope that you will,、uh, that you do want to keep TTLT going, and you or a sponsor that you know, a company that you go, know, you will encourage them to donate to TTLT. Thank you. We appreciate every dollar we get. And if you want to learn more about TTLT, get more involved,、um, make sure that you, can, you send us a voicemail on our, at our website at ttlt.org. You subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel.、Uh, you join our Facebook group. There's a lot of great conversations happening in our Facebook group, and the Facebook group is called TTELT. And you can follow us at TTLT1. On Twitter and on Instagram at t.telt. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.